Shein, the notorious fast fashion online retailer, just got hit with RICO charges. RICO charges, if you're unaware, are what brought down the mob. RICO is an acronym that stands for Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations. Before the RICO Act, it was very difficult to indict groups of people for crimes committed in concert with one another. In other words, no one person was guilty of committing the crime, so there wasn't one person who could be arrested for it. The RICO Act made it possible for anyone involved in the crime to be held accountable for the part that they played in it. And if you're unfamiliar with Xi'an, they're a Chinese online clothing retailer who has earned a reputation for selling fast, cheap fashion to adults and teenagers around the world. They get memed pretty hard for epitomizing the notion of you get what you pay for, but more seriously, they've come under fire in recent years for a few different reasons. For one, they're contributing to an incredible amount of landfill waste by producing and selling cheap and cheaply made clothing that is designed not to last. Also, the clothes is said to be laced with harmful chemicals. Also, they've been accused of running a sweatshop in violation of both child labor and forced labor laws where the workers work for over 16 hours a day paid per garment produced, not per hour worked. More recently, they sponsored brand trips for influencers to tour their facilities. The influencers then made video content about how ethical Shein is as a business based on what they saw with their own eyes. But as everyone else seems to have pointed out, it never occurred to these fashion influencers, who are decidedly not investigative journalists, that they were only being shown what the brand wanted them to see. I think my biggest takeaway from this trip is to be an independent thinker, get the facts and see it with your own two eyes. Shein definitely isn't known for its laid back working conditions. Channel 4 literally made a documentary about Shein factories. It found that workers were expected to make over 500 garments a day. They had 18 hour shifts. Shein workers were being paid 3p per garment. That's nothing. It's like she's trying to gaslight us into thinking that if we believe these rumors about Shein having poor working conditions, we're not an independent thinker. There's so much more than what I've mentioned here, but on top of all of that, they're known for their fast turnaround times. Something can be walking down the runway in Milan one day, and Shein will have a dupe for it ready to go within a few days. They've been accused of stealing artwork and designs from big and small scale designers alike, and no one really knew how they were doing it. But like everything else these days, this company is run by an algorithm backed by a quote, mysterious tech genius about whom almost nothing is known. According to the lawsuit, quote, the brand has made billions by creating a secretive algorithm that astonishingly determines nascent fashion trends and by coupling it with a corporate structure, including production and fulfillment schemes that are perfectly executed to grease the wheels of the algorithm, including its unsavory and illegal aspects. So they're producing thousands of new styles and garments per day and selling them around the world at incredibly low prices, like cheaper than a venti frappuccino. They're bringing in billions of dollars in profits and paying their workers next to nothing. But it was difficult to crack down on the operation because it functioned very much like an organized crime unit. It was decentralized to the point that no individual entity could be held accountable for committing the crime, hence RICO charges. So no, this isn't the only fast fashion brand in the world, but they are one of the largest and I would say the most infamous. Influencers have gotten canceled just for being associated with this brand, but others haven't. It's not uncommon to see fashion and beauty gurus posting Shein hauls to their social media platforms, encouraging their followers to purchase more and more stuff. It's all consumerism and commercialism, marketing capitalism, whatever you want to call it. But ultimately, it's wasteful on several levels. It's a waste of resources. It's a waste of these workers' lives. It's a waste of everyday people's money. And to that last point, some people genuinely can't afford to spend a lot of money on clothing. Or maybe they just prefer to spend their money elsewhere, which is fine. In a perfect world, people would spend more money on fewer garments that are of higher quality and are built to last. Unfortunately, even that isn't an option for many people, and even if it was, there's still some degree of shame in wearing the same thing over and over again. Through societal conditioning, it's a flex to never wear the same thing twice. 
When a celebrity does wear something multiple times, it's worthy of a headline. Additionally, it's more expensive to live and purchase ethically. Things made unethically are made cheaply because someone along the supply chain, if not multiple people, are being exploited along the way in order to keep those prices so low. If workers are paid well, which really should be non-negotiable, those higher wages are reflected in the price of the good. So even if you're not a Gen Z fashionista, this is still a pretty groundbreaking case and I encourage you to look more into it because there's a lot that I did not get to in this very short video. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe to the channel and be sure to follow me on all of the socials. Thanks.